Hi guys, welcome to my channel and officially first video. Hope you're all doing well and thanks for taking the time to watch this walkthrough. I'm not a professional vlogger, so bear with me for the lower quality and a lack of skills. The mic, for example, is um, yeah from terrible uh, quality. If this video does well, I will try to up it all for the next one. I'm not sponsored in any ways. I'm just sharing my experience with you guys. Why this video? Well, I got quite a few requests and suggestions to make a video where I show my setup build of the DDJ-1000. So, why not? I know there are other touchscreen solutions possible and I am not claiming I'm the first one, but found that this specific build setup is working best for me. All parts shown in this video, you can find them in the video description below. And if you have any further questions, ideas, suggestions, improvements, please leave a comment and I will read them and reply. There are also some price indicators, however prices can vary, so please check out current pricing online. If you like this video, don't forget to share, to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. So, is this the ultimate controller experience? Prime 4 killer? Better option than the XDJ XZ or even better as a pair of CDJs with a DGM? Well, you to judge. I'm just going to share my thoughts and view on this build and why this is working for me. First of all, why? For my usage, I needed a sturdy, movable, rather compact, professional record box kind of standalone controller that could cater multiple DJs with record box USB support. I didn't want that other DJs would be able to mess with my laptop library or that everyone would have to bring along their own laptop and as such as well taking up more space. Something very fast to set up, to use at home, on an event, something very flexible. So actually I wanted something like the XDJ XZ in a case, but cheaper. Full 4 channel support, bigger screen, more compact, well actually quite a lot of features, I wanted to have more. The DDJ-1000 has full 4-channel support and the perfect layout and all the features I needed. Well, besides the record box, USB and touchscreen support. So this was my controller of choice and decided to enhance this very nice controller by building in an Intel NUC in the case, adding a 13.3-inch touchscreen and 4-port USB hub to mimic as much as possible the XDJ XZ and a CDJ setting. What do I get more compared to the XDJ XZ? Well, bigger modern screen, full record box support with all its features, streaming support, Wi-Fi 6, well, it's running on Windows, so there are plenty of advantages over the XDJ XZ and yes, even Prime 4. First, the case. The case I'm using is a Zomo P DDJ 1000 NSE. Why this case? Well, it suited the requirements for my build and use, sturdy, and I didn't need the laptop shelf to win space, weight and money as well. It's a fine case, just wished it would have some wheels, but that would just add more weight and is just portable enough to carry short distances. Home, car, event. The case itself weighs around 12 kilograms and total built with the case sealed, 21 kilograms. You could make it lighter by buying a lighter case if you can find one, as this is taking the majority of the weight. If you want to buy another case for this build setup, it's important you have some empty space under the controller and enough space behind the controller with the option to close that space. Let's now see what we have under the hood. Under the DDJ-1000 you can find an Intel NUC i5 10 Gen 16GB RAM upgradable to 64GB RAM and an NVMe SSD of 256GB. Has USB Type-C, actually two, which is important. I will explain this later. Now I'm actually not going to put my whole library on the NUC as I will use it with a USB key in kiosk mode. And like this, other users, DJs, won't be able to mess with my track source system. However, you could of course use the NUC to add your full library and add a higher capacity NVMe SSD or even external hard drive. However, be careful with a traditional external hard drive as these are very sensitive to vibrations like when you carry a case or bump into something and it can just break or go corrupt. It will also add some extra weight. My workflow is doing the prep work on my laptop where my full library is stored when I'm on the move, outdoor or just relaxing. 
sync on USB and connect my USB on the USB hub connected to the NUC like you would do on an XDJ exit or CDJs as standalone. The internal NUC is attached using Velcro so I can pull it out or change place if I want it. The USB hub is connected with double sided tape on the NUC. The USB hub is a USB 2.01 which is fine for just reading your tracks However, I will upgrade this one to a 3.0 for faster file transfer. This USB hub is powered by a micro USB cable and connected with the USB to the back of the NUC. Everything is routed, powered by the main power strip. Now the touchscreen. It's a 13.3 inch touchscreen. Be aware, it's a glossy screen. Couldn't find a matte one with decent specs and touch which should better perform in very bright environments like outdoors on very sunny days. However, this one will do for me. What I love about this screen is the build quality. Feels very sturdy, really a piece of quality. Love the fact it has small bezels on the side, looks very sleek and modern and has Type-C and HDMI input. Be aware, if you use the HDMI port of the screen, you will lose touch functionality. So Type-C should be used if you want to have touch functionality as well. There are two Type-C ports on the screen. One to power the screen and one for image and touch. One USB Type-C cable goes to a Type-C power outlet, which was included with the screen. And another Type-C cable goes from the screen to the NUC. The screen comes with this very nice heavy sleeve which I use to mount the screen on the case with Velcro for easy mount, detachability and storage. I added some extra Velcro to attach the monitor in the case for safe transportation. When the screen is mounted, you will have some white Velcro shown on the back used to lock it in the case, which I will probably use to attach a logo or something. And that's it. Everyone can do this. It's not difficult at all. You just need the right combination and you can tweak it to your liking. Can be applied to any controller with a suitable case. Bear in mind, this setup has been put together with main focus for easy deployment, minimize footprint, sturdiness. If they would manage to break the screen, for example, it would not be as big deal as breaking an expensive laptop or a Microsoft Surface Pro and to cater other DJ and users like on an event or a club environment. I hope you like this video. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. And if enough interest, I would make a few other ones about some other small extra case mods like adding a power con connection without soldering, XLR output for the master and booth built into the case and probably other mods I did with other gear I have. Thank you for watching and see you soon.